it's really about how you can improve on your writing, how you can improve on the way you construct that narrative, right? So when people see where the feedback is coming from, I think they're more amenable to receiving it. Um, so while it is, it, it could be a harsh process, um, I feel like a lot of people are good with taking that because it's an honest process. They know where that's coming from and they know why that's being said. Hi, my name is Bhumika Anand and I run Bangalore Writers Workshop. This idea that when you write something and you share it with someone and then getting their inputs on your writing really helps happen much later. It was just a little before we started BWW in fact. The first flagship session that we have called the BWW Classic, it's an eight week workshop. What really happens in a workshop like this is, you know, one parameter is already taken care of. You can say for certain that anyone who joins is interested in reading, is interested in writing. So in that sense, you know, that's already there. That's the common thing that binds them together. But later on, because of the workshop, because of the text that we study, because of the way we critique each other, and you know, because of the conversations that we have in the class, all the other peers who are in that workshop also see how other people have grown and how they themselves have grown during the eight weeks. There are some people for whom workshop is not a space, you know, like if you're someone who can't take feedback, then it's definitely not the space for you. Because our feedback is very honest, it's very forthright, and um, and it's also geared towards making you better. That if you're someone who comes with a lot of authority, say, and you don't have an open mind, and you say this is what it is, then this wouldn't work for you. Um, I think I was six years old when I read my first book, you know, those book children's books with four words and things like that that kind of thing later when my mom was telling me stories because she she was the one who really put me into storytelling every day we'd have like about three four stories that she would tell me so when she uh, told me the story of Aladdin and the magic lamp I was like that's my story you know and that's again something I, and I remember feeling very betrayed because you know it was like they stole my idea and then they have made this story kind of thing. So I think that's how far back it is for me, writing and reading. You know, the, before the pandemic itself, our course was very robust. Our exercises were robust. We knew exactly what we were doing. The only shift was to move it to a platform that was convenient for everybody. So initially I experimented with Microsoft Teams and then with Zoom and, you know, there was every day there was feedback. We, we talked about it. We talked about whether we need to take a break now, you know, what do we need to do and things like that. So I really paid attention to how people were responding on classes. Um, but also I think because what I do is not so much that you can disengage and just listen. You, you're constantly participating in a workshop, right? So people don't switch off or get bored or get too tired. It can be exhausting, but that's a different kind of exhaustion. You know, because you're talking so much about intense topics, so that that's the exhaustion that you feel. But otherwise it's okay. So it wasn't much, it wasn't too hard for me, honestly. And um, I was in the BWW Classic uh, because I really wanted a, a space to really work on my writing and get it to another level, really get feedback. And actually it gave me exactly what I wanted. Something that uh, I would never imagined. Of course, the way I read has completely changed and I can now call myself as a reading enthusiast. Just having that group of people, you know, where people are enthused about books, about writing, about reading and having that space where we discuss and when the first lockdown happened, all rules were out, you know, so people could talk about COVID, people could talk about um, you know, how they were feeling, you could reach out to each other. So all of that really kept me alive. I know for a lot of people who are not socializing, who are not going out or who are stuck with, you know, isolating jobs, this can be quite terrible. So the community is really an open space and it's a very inclusive space and it's a safe space. So that's really what it has been for me. And, um, and I think as long as that's there and I know that there's this large network of people that I can tap into, I think, I can manage.